Hi, my name is Joseph Ortiz. I'm an Inside Systems Engineer with Symantec Corporation, and today I'm going to show you how to fine-tune a data loss prevention policy for Symantec. For today's demo, I'm going to use a custom rule that includes simply a credit card data identifier. So I created a blank rule, and I added the default out-of-the-box data identifier. When we take a look at this, you can see that there are three different options, wide, medium, and narrow, that we can choose. And from there, we have the ability to start picking up detections for credit cards. If we take a look at what these data identifiers are looking for, we can see here that we've got a list for each individual uh, rule set, narrow, medium, and wide, describing what we're paying attention to. For this particular demo, I ran a uh, pickup uh, of a file that had multiple types of credit cards in it. And let's take a look at the first detection and what that appeared like. So in the first detection, I copied over a file from uh, remote storage to my local drive. And you can see here that we have a pickup of 40 different matches within this file type. So this file, customer credit card information, had 40 different matches. Please note that the first match is actually uh, what would be an American Express credit card number. We know this by the first two digits. Um, each credit card issuer has its own unique identification. This is known as an IIN. These things can be found online or you could look at them uh, in any sort of compliance or regulation uh, handbook. So in this example, I actually picked up on 40 credit card numbers and that's great. Well, in some customers' environments, we may have a situation where Visa and MasterCard are the only accepted or perhaps American Express is the only accepted. So how can we start to tune this policy so that we're paying attention only to the things we want, lowering our potential for false positives or maybe other uh, 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 numbers that may be coming up and showing as a credit card number? Well, the first and most easy step to do is to stay within that policy and begin to fine tune. So part of that initial policy that we have is the ability to begin doing what we call an optional validator. Optional validators will require that the, that the uh, number that we're picking up on either uh, end in very specific characters or, or exclude very specific ending characters or beginning. In this example, what I did is I actually said, I'm not going to pay attention to three, four, or three, seven as a beginning combination because I don't accept American Express. My business doesn't accept it, so therefore any number that may accidentally be found with those two beginning characters, I can safely assume are nothing that I'm charged with paying attention to or, or being uh, 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 in charge of. So if I come back to my list, after making that rule change, so using the optional validator option right within the rule, you can see here that in the first detection, I did have three, four as a, as a pickup. And in the second, we only came up with 30 numbers. And when I click through, you can see it's the same file type, but three, four is no longer there. Um, we didn't pick up any detections because we told the rule not to pay attention to those particular number sets because we don't have those in our charge. So that's the first mecha mechanism we could use to start fine tuning. Um, on top of those mechanisms, we can also say, hey, if we're going to start paying attention to things, we can use a Boolean logic. So if we wanted to say we needed to see these particular numbers and also match on any of the other previous data identifiers, Perhaps we're matching on just simply keywords or another regular expression, we can do that as well. If we find that we have a data identifier that has numbers in it that we don't need to pay attention to, we can actually take a look at the original data identifier. So this is the second mechanism we can use to start fine tuning our policy. And I could look at that credit card number, data identifier, and actually begin to adjust what is used universally across the, the environment. So you want to take care here, right? We don't want to change anything in this policy that would necessarily affect other policies or uh, anything in this data identifier that would affect other policies. If this data identifier is in use across the environment and you make a change here, it will make a change across the whole environment. So while we can understand what's taking place here, we were probably better, better off actually generating a new custom data identifier for the things we want to pay attention to. So knowing that I didn't have to pay attention to American Express numbers. I did a look up on the IIN. I have some links that will be provided with this video that will show you where you can find these things online. And I found the rules that were engaged for my, uh, my American Express associations. So I took these rules, I copy pasted, or you can regenerate them and write them yourself. 
and I created an Amex only custom data identifier. So in this rule, I basically just named it American Express only. I'm explaining that this is going to be used to identify just American Express credit card numbers. And I made the rule so we're looking for just either third or 16 digits that contain or start with 34 or 37. Uh, I accounted for dashes, periods, and then also for spacing. So with this pattern in, uh, matched, I named the normalizer here as digits because that's all I'm concerned with. And I also added an additional validator after the first pickup. So I did one detection without the lunch check and I did another one with, and I'm gonna show you what the differences are. Once this is in place, you can add as many uh, validators as you like. So if you found the need to actually write a custom script and add it, you can simply put in your script here and add that validator. Once that's saved, now we can be used in any policy. So I created a second policy this time and I did the exact same steps as the first, except instead of creating it with the pre-populated uh, data identifier, I used American Express only. So now I have the exact same options. I can have my rule that I customized and built. I could still use optional validators if I am so inclined, or I can go back and edit this uh, uh, custom data identifier myself. When we look at what the detections look like post uh, creating that, that custom data identifier, You'll see now that when I scanned for information within that same file type, so I'm using the exact same file, on my first hit, I got 10. So this is now ignoring the other 30 social, or potential credit card numbers in there because those credit cards are nothing that I want to pay attention to. So in this example, now I'm only paying attention to the number sets inside of here that are only three and four. Uh, you can see there's also a three, seven detection here too, and please take note of that. So in this first swing, I actually just said, look for the patterns and do not execute a LUN check. If I return to this report, you'll see that my second hit only yielded nine matches. And in this one, I actually did it a few moments later when I added the LUN validator. Now you'll note that that 3-7 pickup, I put that credit card number in there and it doesn't validate to the LUN, LUN algorithm. So I hopefully, in this demonstration can kind of show you a the granularity at which you can begin to approach this um, b the methodologies you can use either uh, generating uh, an optional validator underneath the original policy or creating your own custom data identifier to either pick up or exclude those types of detections so we can also use the data identifier that we created from a custom one as an exclusion so i want to pay attention to all credit cards except for my American Express. Um, so thank you for your time. My name is Joseph Fortes, and have a great day.